start out with the Giants here. Everyone in the world wanted to give them a quarterback, whether they were traded up to three, whether they were taking one at six. They end up standing pat if they can't get up to number three. They take Malik Neighbors. Give me the state of the Giants and why not taking a quarterback in this draft made sense. Well, they did. I mean, we knew. Go back to the combine when we were doing the insiders from Lucas Oil Stadium. And uh, which one of you? You asked me, I think, Tom. What's the percentage chance that the Giants take a quarterback? And And then we tweeted it. Very specific. And I was like, okay, uh, 78.6%. Like, I pulled a number. (laughs) <laughs> out of thin air, right? Just to be funny. And it was like, yeah, the NFL Network tweeted it. All the Giants blogs were like, he says it's 78 points. Like, what would lead you to believe that that was it's the pretty number high percentage, that was actually mathematically uh, legitimate? So, um, but at the time we talked about it, you know, you tell me, are one of those teams at two and three willing to move? Which back then, if you had asked me, and I think I even said it on the show, I- I'd be shocked if two and three stayed put. If somebody, if one of those two teams didn't uh, trade out, which – they wound up not trading out. That was the most surprising thing to me. And if you had told me back then those teams aren't moving, I would say, yeah, then it's unlikely the Giants take a quarterback because are you going to take the fourth ranked quarterback at that spot once you finally get the six? So that's kind of where it was for them. And uh, they did make their effort to get up and get Drake May, uh, but two wasn't moving, and which w- would have been an in division move, which would have been uh, unheard of for a quarterback at that spot for a day. You know, we've seen trades within the division elsewhere, but just to, to see it happen at that uh, top of the draft would have been, would have been uh, unprecedented. So, yeah, I mean, they, they tried their best at that point. You take a receiver to help Daniel Jones. I think they, I don't think I know they went into this draft process saying, all right, if we can land a guy who we think is going to be a franchise changing quarterback, we're going to land that guy. If not, we're going to try to surround Daniel Jones, who they have had confidence in that his rehab will be on track and is on track and will be set for week one of the NFL season, at which point he will be the starter. Um, Drew Locke is there, and Drew Locke they have uh, confidence in, and they certainly made a strong move to bring him in as a free agent. Uh, during the rehab process, Drew Locke's going to push Daniel Jones, and uh, who knows, after week one, if Daniel Jones is not playing well, uh, th- that's up to Daniel Jones, basically. But uh, at this point, they they feel like they're confident in him, and they've got a game-breaking, potential game-breaking presence in Malik Neighbors. They have not had that since Odell. I know the comparisons are there because of the LSU thing, uh, but this is the kind of uh, piece that they need to get to the point where we thought maybe Darren Waller was going to be uh, the element that was going to open up this offense and, and lead him to be something you got to worry about. Instead, week one, they come out and they're more conservative than they were the year before, which I still don't quite understand how we uh, got to that point. So this is the state of the Giants is Malik Neighbors needs to be the guy that unlocks Daniel Jones and unlocks this offense right now. We had Jarvis Landry on the show yesterday, former LSU Tiger like Malik Neighbors. I had him give his Mount Rushmore of LSU receivers. He put Malik Neighbors on that list. And he was going back, calling back to Dwayne Bow and guys from yesteryear. And he said, based on not just what he sees, but the sources that he still has in Baton Rouge, he said, this guy is going to be legit. You know, the question yeah. really is about Daniel Jones. And you're there, Mike. I'm sure just you run into Giants fans. You've got family members, friends, whatever. Like, What's the environment around Daniel Jones? In other words, are we going to get into training camp and this is going to be nonstop when is Daniel Jones going to be out of the lineup or people listen they're pot committed for 35 million dollars this year are people willing to give this a chance with Daniel Jones I believe that most Giants fans just just gauging the reaction leading up to the draft most Giants fans uh wanted neighbors which leads to them uh showing some confidence in Daniel Jones they haven't seen the full Daniel Jones since he's been here. I mean, John Mara said it himself best when they hired, when they hired, I think when they hired Brian Dable or was it Joe Shane? It was one of those press conferences. John Mara spoke to the side and said, we've done everything we possibly can to screw this guy up. Changing head coaches, changing offensive coordinators, haven't had an offensive line, haven't had weapons around him. So we're still at that point with Daniel Jones. (laughs) Add the ACL recovery on top of that. And you still have a, a huge question at the quarterback position that needs to be answered by him playing well and by him coming out and showing that he could be the guy that if you need him to throw 40 to 45 times a game, if you need him to throw for 4,000 yards on a year, that he can be that guy. If you need him to come back uh, at the end of the game and, and, and lead you to a comeback victory and throw you to a win, like we saw in his first action when he played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers years ago and he let a comeback victory and you're like, oh, okay, cool. This is why they picked him sixth overall. He's 
sort of Eli Jr. Doesn't look like he has a pulse, and then all of a sudden, at the key point in the game, he's making the plays that you need him to make to win the game. That's what we need to see. Now you've got Malik Neighbors added to it. You've got them pretty much doubling down. And because this is not the regime that drafted him. That was the other thing. It was like, okay, well, uh, when it's not the regime that drafts you, you come in. It's a quarterback that hasn't blown you away. They can't wait to get their next guy. This would have been the opening for the Giants and the new regime to do that. They did not do that. Uh, they had the chance to take J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix, even Bo Nix if they wanted to. They would have interest in those quarterbacks later in the draft. They didn't have them rated that high. They said, you know what, we're going to ride with Daniel Jones, and they, and they are. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 